The Worker and Node system is one of BDO's most unique features. Perfecting your own Worker Empire is a passive journey we undertake, and it changes as you progress through the game. By investing a little bit of time to learn the ins and outs about workers and nodes, you could set yourself up for some easy wins in the long run. For example, let's say you're just grinding mobs for silver and that's your main source of income and fun in the game. Great, that's perfectly fine, but along the way, by growing your worker empire with the free energy your character is accumulating, you could say set yourself up for getting Guru 1 cooking, for a great passive income boost, collecting high-end mats for alchemy to make your own endgame elixirs, or mats for a boat you might want somewhere down the line. Even if these don't interest you at the moment, at the very least these workers could be earning you millions of silver in the background while you play the game in your own way. So in this video I'm going to be going over all the basics about getting your own workers, setting up the nodes, and what you should be looking out for when you're deciding which nodes to invest in. Also, I'll be going over all the major towns and highlighting some really good nodes that you should look into and consider picking up. Previously, I was able to go from town to town just highlighting which are the best nodes that you should all get, but the game has progressed since those days and there's a lot of options and variability depending on how you want to play the game or what you want the worker empire to do for you. So based on that perspective, I'll help you guys figure out what is the best option for you. What's going on guys, Pansy here and welcome to this video where we're going to be going over how to build your own worker empire. If you find this video helpful, please do like, comment, and subscribe and check me out at twitch.tv slash I'm Pansy. Now to start off, let's talk about the worker menu. You access this by clicking the pickaxe icon on your UI and this will open up your worker menu. Here you can filter between the town they're associated with as well as the grade and you can see where all of them are, what are they doing, and each of their respective stats. Now let's talk about how to get your own workers. In all major towns, there's NPCs called work supervisors and by speaking to them you have a few options. In order to find them, you can hit the magnifying glass on the top right, hit find NPC, scroll all the way down to the worker option and click that. It'll take you right to them. Now when you speak to them, you'll see that there's options of contract workers and worker exchange. So worker exchange is basically where players sell their own workers they just post it up and anyone can go and buy them. Contract workers is how you roll for your own worker utilizing your energy. So it costs five energy per roll. Now the number of workers we can have is limited by the lodging. So by default, every major town has one free slot for a worker, but in order to increase past that, there are several ways to acquire more lodging. First one is to hit M and go to the town and you can unlock more lodging by purchasing the respective houses. So in order to do that, in order to find out which ones has lodging, just hit the drop down menu on the top right and select lodging and I'll show you exactly where they are. Click on them and purchase them with CP and it'll increase the number of worker slots you have for that town. Now let's see how to actually roll for a worker. Go to a work supervisor and hit contract workers. It'll say you have to spend five energy, hit yes and voila, it rolls a worker for you. Now you'll see that the name and the uh, color of the name is going to be different depending on the tier of the worker. They are white, which is naive, green, which is normal, blue, which is skilled, yellow, which is professional, and lastly, orange, which is called artisan. Each tier of worker is way better than the last, artisan being the best, but starting out, you can definitely pick up some blue uh, goblins or blue blue or yellow workers just to get you started and they are perfectly fine. Over time you can acquire new workers by buying them at the worker exchange or rolling for them or even using the promotion system which I'll explain after this. But in addition to the name and the tier you'll notice there are different races of workers. They are as follows. Goblins, humans, giants, papus, fetus, and dwarves. And based on the race, their base stats are going to be vastly different. For example, the goblins, papus, and dwarves, they have the highest work speed, movement speed, but lowest luck and stamina. While the human has pretty decent work speed, but very low movement speed, they have high amount of luck and a decent amount of stamina. Whereas a giant, has very low work speed, movement speed, and luck, but has extremely high stamina. A Fetus is just like a giant, but with a little bit better work speed. 
While there are some use cases for humans, in general, I would recommend you start off using the fastest workers that are goblins, papus, and dwarves. You'll be able to roll goblins anywhere in most of the towns except in Kamasylvia where you get papus and fetus, and in Odraxia where you get dwarves, humans, and giants. Now, in order to make this go faster when you're rolling for workers, you can hit the view continuously button and select the kind of grade you're looking for. Me personally, I only want artisans, so I can just set that up, hit uh, the maximum amount of times, and say view continuously. So it just starts rolling through it. So as you saw, there was a professional goblin, which is pretty good, but I'm at a stage where I really don't need it. So you can set yours for professional or something, and you can pick up a few professional workers fairly easily. They do come up a lot more often now since they did buff the chance of getting them in one of the more recent patches. Now let me show you how to feed your workers in order to recover their stamina. This is going to be important when maintaining your worker empire. And after this I'll talk about promotions and then we'll get to the good stuff that is the actual nodes themselves. So we are here in Valia. We're going to go pay a visit to the chef. So over here we have Chef David of Flinto, talk to him, go to his store. You'll see he has some basic cooking utensils. If you're new and you don't have anything better, feel free to pick that up. Now you'll see a bunch of material here for cooking. These are regular base materials you'll need for various recipes while cooking, and you can buy an infinite amount of these depending on the amount of silver you have. Now the two recipes we're going to be focusing on is beer and grilled bird meat. I will put the recipe screenshots on screen and for each beer you will need 5 grain which I'll tell you how to get afterwards, 6 mineral water, 1 sugar and 2 leaving agent. For grilled bird meat you need 2 chicken which I'll show you how to get after and 6 deep frying oil, 2 cooking wine and 1 salt. Everything except for the grain for beer and the chicken meat, you can get right here. So I'm going to go ahead and buy everything I need for each recipe. So we got six mineral water. Now in place of grain, you can use various type of items like potato, corn, wheat, barley, sweet potato, etc. in order to make beer. So some of the easiest ways to get started is to just pick up the nodes adjacent to Valia as they are the closest and the quickest you can get the material from and unlock them using your contribution points, unlock the respective node, which gives you the material and set up a worker, select the number of maximum times you want them to run and hit start work. There are plenty of nodes around Valia, which give you potato and corn, as well as chicken in Bartali farm by going down here picking the chicken production node and assigning a worker. There's also a chicken node here in Finto farm. So by picking up Finto and Bartali, you get both potatoes and chicken. And these are really good to start out with. And with the material you get with those two nodes, you can easily start funding your worker empire and feeding them to keep them going. Now I'm gonna go over some basics on how to cook those meals in order to feed your workers. Go to whichever town you'd like to have as your base of operations and get yourself a residence. You click on a house here which has a residence and buy it with CP. To find which uh, houses have residences, you can use a drop down on top and find out that way as well. Now once you're in your residence, hit the place mode, select the cooking utensil you just bought and drop it down. Now once you have all of your material and you're ready to start cooking, just go to your cooking utensil and hit R. And now you put in the ingredients. So the reason why I told you the recipes for both beer and grilled bird meat is because when you first start out, you won't have enough material coming in right off the bat to just sustain yourself immediately. It will take some time to acquire all the nodes, get workers on them, and then start getting all the materials together to start feeding your workers. So initially you can start off with both beer and grilled bird meat, but grilled bird meat is usually more economical and recover more stamina uh, per one item than beer. All right, now let's make some beer. We're gonna be using five potatoes, six mineral water, one sugar, and two leaving agents. Hit start cooking. And there you go, you got some beer. 
Now let's do the same for the grilled bird meat, just so I can demonstrate. That's gonna take two chicken meat, six deep frying oil, two cooking wine, and one salt. Start cooking. And there you go, you have some grilled bird meat. So now in order to feed your worker, just click on the worker menu and go to recover all and you'll see all the different options you have here. As you can see, beer only recovers your stamina by plus two, whereas grilled bird meat recovers it by plus three. So select the item you wanna use and hit confirm and it'll recover the stamina. Now let's talk about promoting your workers. Go to the worker menu and hit the promotion information tab. Now here you can see uh, the respective information for whether you can promote a worker and how many times they can try to get promoted. Now ideally I'd only recommend you spend time trying to promote a professional worker to artisan, but if you do have some free slots you could use a blue to go to go to professional. Generally even if I was to start off I would usually just focus on the professional goblins anyway. So in order to promote one of these workers, you have to check these arrows on the right side. You'll see the numbers. That means how many times they can get promoted. We have this guy in Trent over here. He has two promote, possible promotions and you can hit promote here. Now, depending on the level of the goblin, there's a higher success chance of them getting promoted. Starting at level 10, their success rate for promotion increases by 2% per level. So for going from professional to artisan, they have a 10% chance at level 10, a 30% chance at level 20, and a 50% chance at level 30. You might see that and think, hey, we should get them to level 30 before we start promoting them, but it takes a very long time for a worker to get to level 30. So ideally, I recommend you get your worker to about level 20 or higher before you start trying to promote them. We have this guy over here, he's level 23. I'm gonna try to promote him and just hit promote and it'll say it'll take eight hours to do the test now if you want to pay to win you can hit complete now but it costs you 90 pearls which i don't recommend this is a passive journey guys there's really no point in rushing this so um unless you can really afford it don't really worry about it it's 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 such a minor thing just as you pl passively play the game see which workers are in a good position to get promoted and just let them run it through now, finally, before we get started with the actual worker node empire stuff, the last thing I want to talk about is when you look at a worker and hover your mouse over them, you see a various amount of skills. Now, this is really important because if you want your worker to do a certain workshop or do a certain task, they might not always be the best, just depending on uh, what their tier is and how much speed and movement speed they have. If you look at the individual workers and their skills, if you line those up, it really benefits you to utilize those skills to make that specific item or now let's say you don't like the skills they have and you specifically need something else well if you look at the bar under the portrait of the worker you can see a yellow bar here that that is his xp bar so if you wanted to you could actually reroll the skills if you hit the chain skill you can see the tooltip it says your worker must be at least level 30 with 20 percent of xp if you hit that then you can select one of their skills that you want to re-roll. For example, let's say I'm never going to use this guy for making furniture or I'm never going to use him for making weapons and armor. Hit confirm, select that and hit confirm and it'll re-roll it. Now when you look at him, you see that that one skill got re-rolled, but it consumed 20% of his XP. So once a worker hits level 30, it's still not over for them. They can still become better by utilizing the amount of XP they have on their XP bar and re-rolling the skills is something that you really want. This is one of the long run ways that you min max your worker empire and keep improving it. Even after you're at the end game, you have a bunch of artisan workers and everyone's max level. You can still keep getting better and keep making your worker empire more efficient. All right, guys, now we're gonna be going over the worker empire from major town to town. I'm gonna be showing you guys what I have right now and why I use it. It's very specific to me and my account and the stage of game I'm in right now. Uh, you definitely don't want to copy this one to one because unless you're doing exactly what I'm doing, it's really no use for you. There's a lot of better things you could be doing. So 
I'm going to give you a quick overview of what I have right now for my workers. And then I'm going to talk about what are the good nodes for each major town. And we're going to just zoom in and highlight those and show you what you could potentially be utilizing your workers for. So as you guys know, I do a lot of hunting and by hunting, I get a lot of red meat. That red meat is very useful because that is really important for making Balanos meals. And I use those to do Imperial cooking. So everything is just linked in together and it all ties in. In order to do Balanos meals, I need fish. So one of the sub meals is smoked fish steak. And in order to make that, I need to get fish and the only way I get them is from worker nodes. So as you can see here, I connected my Heidel all the way to up to Valia so the workers from one town can work in another town's nodes. In order to do that you have to make sure there is a direct path connected between the two towns and I've unlocked a bunch of fishing nodes uh, all around here. So all the way up till here and I used to have them all the way in Portifuria as well but I don't need them anymore because I have a pretty good supply so I toned it down over there and wanted to spend my CP elsewhere. Additionally, I did spend 50 CP to rent a nether weapon, so I did have to remove a considerable portion of my worker empire, but there are a lot of mats that I didn't need. I still have some nodes up here at Shakatu, uh, gathering stuff like fig, or up here for nutmeg and stuff. All of these revolve around cooking, and the ones around Valencia as well. So, for me, cooking is the main driver for my worker empire, but... There are other useful things like alchemy that you can really fund with this. For example, uh, let's look at Ancient Stone Chamber. Over here, you can ex excavate and get Trace of Ascension. Down here at uh, Lynch Farm Ruins, you can get Trace of Savagery and Hunting. Up near Valia, there's a few nodes, the Goblin Cave and Balanos Forest. Over here, you can get Spirit's Leaf uh, here as well, and also down in Trent. And these are really useful because they are very important in an alchemy. So with the things I pointed out, over the past just two months, I've invested in various nodes and removed them after I didn't need them anymore. And it's an ongoing effort. I constantly keep shuffling my uh, nodes around and just doing them as I need them, depending on what I'm working on at the moment. So that's what I meant when this is gonna evolve with you along your journey through the game. Now, as you can see, I have 39 contribution points just sitting there. That's because a lot of uh, contribution points freed up from the recent update where they reduced the amount of contribution a lot of these nodes needed. And I like to keep them around just for flex stuff. So if I suddenly need more of something, I can immediately go pick it up and get some workers working on it. Now let's focus on you guys. Let's say you're starting out and you want to know what are some good nodes to invest in. So now we're gonna go from town to town. I'm gonna talk about important nodes that are around there and good ones that I would recommend picking up uh, depending on what you're doing. All right, guys, now let's get started with the actual nodes themselves. For this explanation, I'm going to be utilizing the website Something Lovely. I don't think this was updated with the most recent CP changes, but rather we're going to use it because it's showing us all the resources right on top instead of me having to hover over the individual nodes. So it's just much easier for me to explain to you guys. Now, one thing I want you to remember is whenever we're talking about nodes, which are, say, kind of far away from your main town, for example, here near Valia, if you wanted Ancient Stone Chamber for those nice traces, it's a bit of a distance to go. So if you were to unlock all of these nodes along the way, that's a lot of CP spent just for one node. So in order to offset the cost of the node, you want to pick up some of the ones that are along the way as well. So whenever you're planning to go for a far away node, also take into consideration the ones on the way and try to make use of them. Otherwise, it starts becoming pretty expensive for the amount of CP you're spending. Now let's start off with Valia. Valia is one of the first towns we encounter and it's probably where most of us are going to start our worker empire. And it's not a bad town to start at all because there are a lot of vital resources all around. One of the most important thing you're going to want to pick up is obviously going to be food in order to sustain your workers. So for that, I would definitely recommend picking up potato and chicken nodes. There are two very nice chicken nodes here near Valia. The first one is down south at Bartali Farm, and the next one is at Finto Farm. And while you're there, since you've already invested CP in those nodes, you want to pick up those potato nodes as well. To the left of Valia, we have Logia Farm, which also has potatoes. 
Now these are really nice because if you put some goblins on top of that, they start stacking up pretty quick. Now if you go a little bit further away from Valia, you start seeing a few other type of nodes which are more oriented for alchemy. For example, we have the Spirit Leafs nodes, which are pretty valuable in its own because there are very few nodes which actually have them. But one thing you want to note is that the amount of Spirit Leafs you get per day, even if you have all these Spirit Leaf nodes in the game, it's not that much. Whenever we go for Guru 1 Alchemy or something, we need like over 100 to 200,000 of those. And if we're power leveling, it's not enough to sustain you, but it is something that adds up over time and does give you some silver value. There are some mushroom nodes around here. And over here you have the ash timber and ash sap node along with some mushrooms. So depending on what you're looking to do, obviously you want to pick up that food so you're able to start your worker empire off and feed your workers. And if you are planning to go for, say, processing, that timber always comes into play. A lot of the timber nodes uh, do help you with leveling your processing as well as a lot of other nodes out there. Now, as we mentioned earlier, Ancient Stone Chamber is all the way down here, and along the way, you can pick up a few nodes, like the corn nodes here at Toscani Farm. And if you really want, you could pick up the copper and the uh, maple timber and monk's branch node here. I generally avoid copper because I never felt it was that valuable. Um, there is some use for it while processing and stuff. If you go to the northwest, there are a few more other nodes, like the uh, Powder of Darkness and some more mushrooms here, some more mining nodes where you have iron ore and copper. I honestly never really expanded towards the northwest here. And honestly, I didn't even go over here to the imp cave for these mining nodes ever. I usually just kept it all the way down here to ancient stone chamber. And I even pulled that out after some time because it was just a lot of CP going in and I wasn't utilizing any of the items in between. But overall, Valia is a good place to get started, especially if you are also cooking because sometimes you might want the fishing nodes as well. Since Valia is a pretty decent sized hub, uh, you can get quite a few of the fishing nodes out there and they do add up quite decently. I am completely self-sufficient when I'm using those fishing nodes. I don't even have the Portiferia ones anymore. I just keep the ones in Valia. And whenever I'm short on workers for some of the other nodes, I do connect Heidel. So I'm able to utilize some of the Heidel workers for that. And honestly, I never felt like I was ever short on fish for say balanos meals through cooking and hunting and stuff so so it's definitely worth getting if that's something you want to do in the future all right now let's move on to heidel starting up at the north you have a couple of these mining nodes i never really bothered with them uh if you really wanted the iron node you could pick it up for the powder of darkness and if you do connect valia uh, with Heidel, it is uh, something that you can easily pick up. But the more important ones are towards the northwest of Heidel. Over here, you have a very important node that is Alejandra Farm. And that's kind of valuable because there's quite a few recipes which uh, do need honey. And so, yeah, it's definitely worth picking up. But I do avoid picking up pumpkin nodes. There are several pumpkin nodes around here. Personally, I never pick up the pumpkin nodes because I feel they're a bit of a waste. You can buy paprika from uh, NPC and Calfion. And as both of them are vegetables, you have an infinite amount you can buy from the NPC itself, so I always felt workers are better spent elsewhere. Next to the west of Heidel, you have Lynch Farm Ruins, which has a really nice trace node, and if you go a little bit further, you have the northern plain of Serendia, where there's a pretty decent node for a maple timber and red tree lump, and if you really wanted to, you could pick up the silver azalea as well, but I never really bothered with the azalea. Now coming down south, you have the coveted wheat nodes. Wheat, wheat is really nice. You can obviously use it for something like beer or even grind it down for wheat, a flour, and make it into dough, whatever. So there are some pretty good use cases in cooking for them. Um, if you pick up the flax nodes, those are pretty easy and pretty decently yielding nodes, which you can process for XP or something or, you know, send for bartering <laughs> mats or something like that. In between, you do have a few nodes like... Um, the dwarf uh, mushroom alchemy does require them, but not in such a large quantity that I ever had to farm them like that, but uh, definitely worth noting. Now, when you come down to southwest of Heidel, you have Glish over here. You can put workers here and use this as a hub itself. Me personally, I always had my workshops running here for cooking and alchemy tools just because back in the day before Magnus, it was most convenient to uh, have them running nearby while 
I was um, cooking in Heidel. That was my main town. But that's what I used Glish for mostly. Around Glish, you have a few nodes. You have the Cloud Mushroom and a Letter Ore, Powder of Time. If you need those, uh, there are options. But I never really bothered with anything here. At Glish Ruins, uh, you do have a nice Trace node for Trace of Origin. Trace of Origin are pretty valuable. Uh, so that's definitely an option. But once again, remember, if you are unlocking nodes along the way, um, it could get pretty pricey. And you want to make sure um, you are utilizing some nearby nodes and you're not stretching yourself to get there. If you're coming here through Glish, it's fine, but I wouldn't start uh, investing through Heidel just to get there. Now let's move on to Calpheon. That's a bit west from Heidel. So all around Calpheon are a bunch of nodes and some of them are quite tempting. But me personally, I never really invested too much in Calpheon, but there are some very convenient nodes. Directly northeast of Calpheon, you have Northern Wheat Plantation and they have some very nice uh, nodes here. The wheat and barley are definitely good. I would avoid the paprika because you can buy paprika from an NPC. Then directly northwest of that, you have the Bernianto farm, which has some very nice traces. Both of those traces are quite valuable and those are an option. But remember, you want to have a good worker in order for traces to be worth it because they are low yield in general, especially if you have a pretty low tier worker. Now remember, Calpheon also has a lot of workshops and it's a massive city, so you can definitely make use of that. Looking down southwest, you, you might be tempted with certain trace nodes and stuff like that, but you got to remember the distance is going to be the question uh, if it's worth investing that much CP to unlock that node. But if you ever do need any of these items or you'd need to start stockpiling them, uh, it might be worth investing if it's something you really want to do. But also keep in mind, uh, southwest of Calpheon, you have Trent. Here is one of the most lucrative nodes in the game. That is Lumberjack's Rest Area. It's right next to uh, Trent. It's very easy to unlock. Spirit Leaves are always valuable. And this has a pretty decent uh, silver per day. So I'd highly recommend putting a nice worker over there if you can. Now let's talk about Grana. So Grana has some decent nodes around it. Uh, personally, I never really invested too much around here, but there were specific use cases to uh, go to Grana. Uh, whether you want to connect a different node uh, all the way up here, but the Loopy Tree uh, Sap was a very good node for me to have. I did invest quite a bit of CP to um, unlock this one because Loopy Tree Sap is used for spirit perfume elixirs. There were times when it was sold out and not on the marketplace and had to make my own. So it came in really close then but it is a pretty hefty investment just for that alone so make sure you uh, remove that contribution points and put it elsewhere once you're done using it and once you have a decent stockpile otherwise uh, there are some uh, pretty decent nodes around there but uh, I'd only recommend getting it if you absolutely need it east of Grana you have old wisdom tree you can have um, a worker here but it never really panned out that I needed any nodes around here. Uh, the closest useful one to here is probably like Thornwood Sap, but there's another node that's much closer to Odraxia and much easier to acquire. So overall, if you ever need more workers in Kama Sylvia, I suppose you can start making use of that. But otherwise, it's not that big of a deal. Next up is Duvencroon. So this is the Dregan area, and it's one of the places that was very nicely affected by the recent nerfs to the CP cost. For example, directly southwest of Duvencroon, this used to be pretty expensive. I believe the barley and corn were three CP each, but now they're only one. So uh, definitely nice to pick up if you have some workers in Duvencroon. A uh, northeast, you have a Marrick farm, which also has some corn and barley. So those are really nice to pick up if you're around here and you need some easy food. But in addition to that, there are some trace nodes out here, one being Sherikon Necropolis and then Fountain of Origin. But these are pretty far away. You'll have to spend quite a bit of CP to unlock it. Though after the recent nerfs, they're not too bad, but I don't feel it's really worth it. And there are some nodes out here for like uh, Rough Lapis Lazuli and a few other things out here, but it's pretty far out and I never really felt like I needed to invest uh, that much to it. There's another Trace node and a Massive Pure Magic node. <laughs> this Massive Pure Magic node, and there's a few of these out there, but they used to be valuable back in the day before Elvia came out, and these nodes were the only way to even get... Um, the Massive Pure Magic. There was one all the way out here in Star's End, uh, which was uh, 
the main one which everyone used to invest into but now massive pure magic drops like hotcakes at alvia so it's absolutely unnecessary to even consider investing into those so i would not bother at all now also northeast of um Divincroon, quite a distance away. Um, the there is a stuff like Bracken. Bracken is Bracken is really nice for cooking. However, um, unless you have a lot of workers and you're uh, pretty invested in the node network around here, it's really not that big of a deal. The yield isn't that great. Uh, not so much that you'd start being able to pump out uh, the relative meals. You'd probably have to still go ahead and gather for those. So and. Up here, these nodes used to be a lot more expensive. I believe these uh, fur nodes used to be like, what, 5 CP each and stuff. So uh, they did cut that down, but still it's quite a bit of a way out. I wish there was a closer path to like these far out nodes, but unfortunately there isn't. So unless you're pretty invested, it's really not that worth it. Now switching back to another map, this is Bediolytics. They have one of the smoothest uh, world map. I just wish the uh, node icon showed, like the resource icon showed on top of this so I could uh, more easily explain, but um, they do have the CP cost uh, updated. So as you can see, the surrounding uh, nodes are quite cheap around Duvin Crew now. But let's move on to IL-10. Uh, one of the issues out here for any of these uh, major cities was that the nodes were too expensive for things to be worth it. But but now it seems to be a little bit better. Uh, there are some um, nodes around Ialting that you could consider getting. The Citrin uh, node is pretty close by. It's directly east and it's uh, only a single step away. There is a Snowfield Cedar Sap. I was out there gathering that myself for alchemy, so it's worth picking that up if alchemy is something you're doing or if you're trying to make your own endgame elixirs. Those are pretty cool. Though gathering here wasn't too bad, but uh, you have some more uh, lucrative nodes here, which uh, I don't know about the yield. I don't assume they're too great, but the price is there. So if you are invested in Ialton and you wanted to pick up some of these uh, surrounding nodes, you could probably take a little detour and pick that up if you had spare CP. But it is an additional 4 CP to even unlock that. But over here, you have more snowfield cedar sap great um then there's bracken all the way down here like i said if you're going all the way down there don't just go there for one item uh, make sure you're utilizing all the surrounding nodes so that you're offsetting the cost uh, of unlocking all this uh node network with all that expensive cp uh, in order to make it actually be worth it. So you have some of the traces over here, uh, trace of ascension up here, you have trace of death. So, you know, Bracken and these traces, those are all pretty lucrative and you have the snowfield cedar sap. So if you are invested in Isleton, going down to the Southwest isn't a bad idea, but then you start going a bit more further and these are very specific uh, items. Uh, only if you absolutely need them, I'd recommend it, I guess, but otherwise it's not really a big deal. Next up is Odraxia. Over in Odraxia, the first thing I prioritized was this node over here. This is the Shiv Valley Road where we get Thornwood Sap because I needed a lot of these for hunting. They are used for turning regular stuffed heads into the special variants, so that was important for me. Then I picked up the chicken node, and because it's attached uh, and along the way, the potato node isn't too bad. I was never a fan of grapes, so I didn't pick up that one but the potato was pretty good. If you wanted to extend a bit further, you could go to the Pilgrim's End if you needed any of these items. Otherwise, if you're really into the excavation nodes, there are a few here, which you could, but once again, uh, the CP cost is a bit high unlocking all of those. Me personally, I have Olin's node unlocked, so I could do the extension because I leveled up Olin's node for grinding purposes. Anyway, that's all that really matters to me in Odraxia. Now moving on to the Medea region, there are a few towns here, the main one being Altanova, but there's also a little town of Tariff here. You can have Orkers. Um, there are a lot of nodes clustered around here. And if you are going to go to some of the further nodes, it is definitely worth picking. The other ones along the way, uh, down south, you do have some useful nodes. Uh, for example, um, over here, there are some trace nodes. You got the trace of earth, which is pretty valuable. There are some valuable sap nodes are all around. Uh, you get some bloody tree knots over here. You have old tree bark. Those are pretty useful for the most part. Remember, if you are going to go for a specific item, whether it's like uh, going to some of the surrounding nodes for building your boat and getting the sap for that, if it's not in stock in your region, uh, make sure you pick up some of the other nodes along the way. So it's worth investing that CP. I wouldn't really go over here for some of these unless you need those mushrooms, but otherwise it's not really a big deal. 
nothing really uh, impressive around here. Omar Lava Cave has some easy um, mining nodes that you get while you're extending out of Alta Nova since you're already crossing this area. Otherwise, south is where you have some uh, pretty decently close uh, mining nodes as well. Southeast of South of Altanova, you have the Abandoned Iron Mine, very popular uh, node since the old days. Um, you get some Easy Ore, Powder of Darkness. Those are always pretty decent, useful for alchemy and stuff. Then you start extending out of Altanova and going toward the northeast. Now, there are several cluster of nodes here, but as you can see, it takes quite a few hops to get around here. And if you want to go southeast, uh, for example, to get... Uh, some of these nodes here, you have to go a bit around. So just keep that in mind. Uh, utilizing Sandgrain Bazaar and picking that up uh, is also an option. Um, but for the most part over here, you have some Elder Tree Sap, which was, um, you know, once upon a time, always out of stock for uh, building your boats and stuff. You do have Purified Water and Bag of Muddy Water. Purified Water, you can actually buy from an NPC in Sandgrain Bazaar. But uh, this was also a way to get some of those... Uh, for free and the bag of muddy water they yielded pretty decently but i never had a much of a use for it for a short period of time i did have uh, these nodes picked up but uh, over time i just dropped them for more useful things now let's take a look at sandgrain bazaar sandgrain bazaar has some really nice nodes now we start getting to the fun ones um the Valen valencia nodes and the valencia towns are uh pretty lucrative and worth investing in uh, right next to um, Sandgrain Bazaar, you have Tef. Uh, that's really useful for cooking. You have more Tef down here. And you have Nutmeg. That is very valuable um, for certain meals. Then you can extend all the way down into desert down here. If you do go down here, uh, just be mindful of uh, the CP cost. Uh, there are quite a few nodes you need to unlock. But the most valuable thing here, in my opinion, is Date Palm. Date Palm is always great. It's really nice for leveling your cooking. Each Date Palm wine is so much XP. Compared to other meals, they're pretty easy to make. So definitely worth it. Um, but be mindful of this node. It's a bit expensive, and I never really felt it was that useful. Mining nodes as well. I never really cared for mining nodes. I'm sure some people have uses for it, but me not really over here you could go to Aquaman to pick up the fig but that's a bit of a stretch i mean if you are going this way and getting this you could go over there and get that but as we're going to see in one of our next town there is a much easier way to get fig um northeast you have this powder of darkness uh once again if you need it it's there but i never really heard for powder of darkness especially after the change to the byproducts in alchemy now moving on to shaka 2 shaka 2 has some cool uh nodes that you can pick up especially uh these right next to shaka 2 that is a shaka 2 farmland you have figs and star anise these are really nice um very useful for cooking uh figs are great and good xp as well as something you can spam because there's a pretty decent amount you're yielding Come Coming up northeast of Shaka 2, you can start going all the way over here. Um, here you have the Freaky, that's really useful for cooking. Um, zooming in over here, you have Nutmeg plus Elder Tree Sap. Once upon a time, Elder Tree Sap was always out of stock on the marketplace, so it's definitely a valuable one. Nutmeg, always valuable because the only way you get Nutmeg in the game is through nodes. Star Anise as well down here. Um, I felt this uh, mining nose was a bit unnecessary and is pretty expensive, so you could ignore that one. Now coming over to Valencia, this is one of my favorite places to start building workers at because you have some really good nodes really close to Valencia. Starting over here is the Ertl farm. You have date palm and pistachio. I never really cared for pistachio. It's not that valuable, but the date palm, super valuable. Uh, definitely put a really nice worker on the date palms. Down south at Valencia Plantation, you also have uh, date palm and you also have Freaky. A little bit further south, you have two nodes of Tef. Um, Tef could be very useful for certain meals, so definitely can pick that up as well. Over here near Ancado Harbor, uh, I never really invested over here, but there is some Tef over there. And if you do stretch all the way out here, there are some cluster of uh, mining nodes and stuff, which you can pick up. Once again, it was never really that necessary for me, but you know, you might have a use case for it or in the future, something changes and it becomes useful. Just keep note of it that these are options out there. To the east of Valencia, you have Ariaza Plantation. I tried investing here. It just never really panned out it wasn't that valuable the yield wasn't that great for me and i never really found much use for any of these nodes over here so like um 
I did for a time uh, keep some workers here, but eventually I removed them. Up to you if you actually need it, but overall, the gold is right here. These nodes yield millions a day, like multiple millions, like three, two to three mil for date palm at least, I believe, if you have a good worker. And that's a similar case for a lot of these nodes, guys. Um, they're not going to be yielding tens of millions each, but it's like one million, two million here and there. And they all add up. And these are something that work passively in the background. As long as you're logged into the game, it's really easy to feed your workers. You can put the food in your family inventory and, you know, immediately feed them from any of your characters. So overall, this might seem like a bunch of words and nonsense when you hear it the first time. But as you play the game and as you unlock the map and understand how these all work and how you're utilizing everything, even if you're just straight up just selling everything to the marketplace, that's fine if you're a new player and you need some cash. But, you know, some of these cooking nodes like a date palm, nutmeg, a figs, star anise, all these things, these are very valuable later down the line as a life skiller. And yeah, you can buy them off the marketplace. But, you know, you can also get them from your workers, which is uh, even more economical if you're playing for the long run. Me personally, I didn't start seriously life skilling until like a year and a half, two years later after I started. But throughout that whole time, I had a bunch of nodes already uh, picked up, especially these cooking nodes, and they stacked up. I had hundreds of thousands, like six, seven hundred thousand date palm figs and all sorts of uh, material, which I was able to boost my cooking up. I am at like G45 or something cooking. So it really helped out that I had a stockpile to work off of. And it really gave me a kickstart when I was ready to start investing in that set of BDO. And yeah, it's something you guys really should consider. All right, now for the TLDR. I know I rambled on for a very long time in this video. If you were staying with me all the way until now, then you're a goat. Awesome. I appreciate you guys watching, but let's run this down. I'm going to go through really quick. If I was to start over with a brand new account and I was going to build my worker empire, here's the nodes that I would focus on. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off at Valia. Obviously, this is going to be one of the best places to start off because, hey, there are some really easy nodes here. Potato, potato, chicken, potato, you and the chicken here. You want all these nodes definitely. I don't think I would immediately extend into uh, the southwest side for that uh, ancient stone chamber anytime soon. Later down the line, once I have a lot of CP, a lot of workers to spare, I would consider it. I would consider getting the spirit leaf nodes right here as well. But I would only do that if I was connecting Heidel to get fish nodes. So around Avalia, there are a lot of fish nodes here that you can easily get to. You can use Ilya Island and go from there as well. But uh, my preference is always Valia. If I need more fish, I go Portiferia and I pull these nodes in. Everything at Olvia is lame. I don't really like it over there. At Heidel, um, coming down over here, the honey production here at this node, um, right here at Alejandra Farm, really nice. Avoid the pumpkin and remember the rule of thumb. If you go for a really far away node, you always pick up the ones on the way. So then you can go over here and get this excavation node for these traces. Uh, I'd avoid the silver azalea and stuff. This is really just, you know, it's unnecessary. If you have extra workers, um, I think you can do better by going north into Valia side or something. Coming down here, uh, I would avoid the pumpkin node. I would pick up the wheat. If I had extra workers, I'd pick up the flax. That's some easy processing XP, and you can use the flax for something else maybe down the line. Uh, definitely uh, the wheat down here. Wheat is super valuable because uh, I am huge on cooking. Personally, I would avoid going into Glish just because I went in there back in the old days for those cooking utensils uh, production but it's not necessary anymore you can use any major town for that so any of the nodes around here i really don't think uh, it's worth anything this uh glush excavation it's too many cp for it to be justified i'd ignore that coming down to comma sylvia the only thing i'd probably ever invest here for is the loopy tree sap and that is not something uh, i need anymore since i can go and uh, get those by other means it's just too much CP involved to go get that. And honestly, everything else here is pretty mediocre. I just ignore Grana entirely. Old Wisdom Tree, I'd ignore it entirely. Um, Odalita, love Odalita because it's my main town. There are some really nice nodes nearby. Um, right here is the Thornwood Sap. I need a lot of those because I do hunting and I need to convert those stuffed heads into the special variants. So those are really good for me. 
Then the chicken note, obviously chicken is great. I use it for cooking. I will definitely pick up that if I had to. Um, then coming into Dregan, if I did invest in Dregan, I definitely get the really easy notes right here. That's corn, barley, barley, corn. Those are super easy to get. Definitely get those very worthwhile in terms of your CP spent. Um, in Isleton, honestly, I probably wouldn't even go here um, right off the bat. If I had to go here, you know, I would try out the Snowfield Cedar sap because that's actually pretty useful for me in um, Alchemy. But otherwise, I don't think there's anything that really interests me. Um, Citroen, it is always out of stock, so you could get that since it's pretty close. But yeah, Cedar sap, Citroen, that's about it over there. Coming to Altanova, once upon a time, I used to be pretty heavily invested in Altanova. Various sap around here that um, back in the day were pretty good. The old tree bark is pretty good here. But the thing is, it takes so much CP to get up here in the first place. And you have to pick up nodes along the way, which aren't too bad. Right now, as you can see, the sap is pretty plentiful compared to what it used to be. So I probably wouldn't even extend this side. My main entrance would be on the eastern side. Um... Once upon a time, I used to have a worker over here for the Powder of Darkness. Not anymore. I would eat that. I, I would ignore these as well just because the CP cost isn't worth it. It's not. These are very late, late investment. Like everything over here, all around Calpheon. Like there's a lot of great nodes, but it's just not something I need at the moment. I don't recommend it unless it's something you definitely know what you're doing with. Uh, speaking of Calpheon, I totally forgot. Trent, you definitely want to get Lumberjack's Rest Area for this one, the Spirit Leaf. This node is probably the highest yielding in terms of money per day. It's a pretty damn good node. Um, then coming back over here, Sangrain Bazaar. Beautiful, beautiful place here. Sangrain Bazaar, pretty much everything. Like I get the Tef, except the mining. I don't like mining nodes. Tef, Nutmeg, Tef, get it. Uh, coming down here for the Date Palm, definitely get it. Don't spend unnecessary CP where you don't have to and you don't really care for those items. This fig is too far out of the way for me to justify it. Uh, if you have a lot of extra CP and you have extra workers, fine. But otherwise, the fig nodes over here and the star anise at Shaka 2 come up here. Go ahead and get that Freake. Freake is pretty cool to have. Elder Tree Sap if you want it. And then come down here for the star anise. That's about it over there. I don't really invest in Ankata Harbor. The reason is Tef is pretty cheap. I don't feel like it's a valuable node unless it's like right there. For example, right here at Valencia. I'd get all these nodes right here for the most part, except the pistachio. Screw pistachio is so cheap, I don't like it. Um, Tef, once again, only if you have spare workers and stuff. And it's not a bad idea to have spare workers because you can have like extra professional goblins working here, leveling up. And as you promote them, as you have to fire them when they fail promotions or something, um, you can do that. And also you can have like, even if they all pass promotion, they're all artisan goblins. You can start rerolling these, um, artisan goblin skills just to min max over there. Cause these are just great nodes in general. I never bothered extending up here. It was just never worth it. And once again, Ariaza never really worth it. Everything I covered now were just vital nodes. Once you got the vital nodes down and you're happy with it, um, you can start expanding into various other node networks. But the most important thing is obviously you have to make sure your nodes are working for you. These are things that you're using and it's promoting your gameplay. For example, I'm a life skiller. What do I need? I need to cook. So I need to make sure I'm getting mats that I'm using for my meals and mats that I'm using for my alchemy and stuff. So, so all in all, guys, that's how you got to play it. This is your game. This is your story. You play it how you will and just make sure you enjoy the ride. I mean, this is a long journey to build up a worker empire. No, don't rush it. Just every day, you know, once in the morning, hit a promotion, once in the evening, hit a promotion. And, you know, over time, your workers are going to get there. They're going to all be artisan eventually. If they don't get it, fire them, get new ones and try again. <laughs> BDO is a game with a lot of depth. And one thing I always say is you're doing essentially the same thing you did from day one, even three years, four years down the line and max gear score. You're just running in circles, killing mobs, but it is a bit more complex than that. It, there is a lot more to it than that. How you get to the end game, that is your journey and you write your own story in this game. Whether you're going to be someone who just full sends and grinds mobs 24-7 or uh, someone who takes a more passive and tactful approach by utilizing your worker empire, life skills, and doing a lot of other things and enjoying everything BDO has to offer. 
and it's up to you how you want to progress in the game. But building a worker empire really does set you up for victory on multiple fronts. Whether you want to be an end game grinder, you're going to need those valuable elixirs and having nodes set up so you can level up alchemy. It all adds up to the end game because you could pre-order everything, but sometimes, you know, it's really hard to get those pre-orders. Now, the average gear score of players have been going up over the years and now a lot more people are at the end game where you know they need their garmart hearts they need end game elixirs uh they need their uh, elixir rotations and stuff so it's a lot harder to pre-order those and it's only going to get even harder as you progress through the game because everyone else is progressing as well so by investing into a worker empire you are helping yourself in the future even if you don't care about any of it now two three years down the line if you're still playing you might be a different person you will start caring so you know you never know it's always worth uh um, you know, investing in the future at the very least, if you decide, you know, it's not for me, you can always sell that material for money. So anyway, this is my little guide for starting off your worker empire. I know I didn't tell you like the exact path to take, but everyone has a different amount of CP. Everyone has a different focus in the game. So keep that in mind. You know, there isn't an actual wrong answer to how you're building a worker empire. As long as you keep in mind that you are trying to invest in your future. So you want to make sure you're, you're picking up things that you are going to use use or uh, you're looking to use otherwise or just selling for money so as long as you're not blowing cp to pick up one single faraway node i think you guys will be fine i hope this helps let me know if you have any tips that you want to share with the others uh in the comment section feel free i know i didn't go full min maxing here in this video maybe in the future we might do a video for that but uh, this is one video that i wanted to get out just to help out people uh, who wanted to get into this side of the game Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it helped. Please check me out at twitch.tv slash I'm Pansy, where I stream. Like, comment, and subscribe if this video was helpful. Take it easy, guys. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.